Ah, London. What a town. History around every corner and a tourist photographing it. Pub serving up a pint and a smile. All that music, theatre and art. And multiculturalism. And the world's oldest underground, the Tube. The class of cities, really. Top shelf stuff. Only took 12,000 years to build it up. And one night to tear it all down. our status. Perimeter security's down, but plenty of your flying friends about. Fucking hell. Dalton, no time to waste. Yes, ma'am. I'm in. If you haven't brushed off, I might. Ever consider leaving these security threats to the authorities? That's rich, Bagley. The government would sooner arrest us for trying to help than actually do something useful. We'll have to sort this one on our own. Carefully, Dalton. Bagley, are you detecting a little worry in Sabine's voice? Brilliant. Asking the computer about feelings. This explains so much. Shut it, you two, and get to work. There she is. Identifying information. Uh, ghosts in this system. That hurt you more than it hurt me. Do us a favor and keep it quiet, Dalton. If they don't shoot me, I won't shoot them. How's that? of dead set gear down here. And why do you suppose that is? What? How did they get their hands on it? I don't know. But someone wants to make it look like dead set was here. Shit. You need to proceed with extreme caution, Dalton. Who are these men in black anyway? Nothing identifying. I suspect that's by design. The entire place is rigged to blow. Jesus, those canisters. Buckley, is that... RDX nitrogen. Enough to level Parliament. 
Can you locate a detonator, Bagley? Not exactly, but there's a device streaming a fuckload of encrypted data from the floor above you. Yeah, that fits the bill. On my way. Set propaganda all around the bombs. These pricks are going to blow up Parliament and hang it on us. Not if you get to that detonator first. these men in black are, they've got brass bollocks to set up in the centre of government. I found the detonator. And it's definitely live. Bagley, I'm going to need some help with this. Yes, you are, but sadly, I'm locked out. Fuck. Well, we don't have a chance without Bagley. Wait, I might know a workaround. We trained in manual overrides at MI5. You're full of surprises. Be quick about it. All right, Bagley, do your thing. I'm in. And the bombs have just armed themselves. Well, that may complicate matters. For fuck's sake. Can you defuse them or not? Of course I can, but I might also trip another failsafe and vaporize you, so fair warning. I expect this to draw some attention your way, Dalton. Oh, I'm counting on you. Company at our back door. Shit. Dalton, we've got some heat here at HQ. How long is this going to take, Bagley? Depends how often you interrupt me with questions. All right, everyone. Faces on, guns out. It's about to get real. They're on me. I'll try and hold them off. They gotta be somewhere! It won't stop! Oh! I know you're here somewhere! Bagley, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's just say I'm both impressed and annoyed by how sophisticated this anti-tamper security is. Still working? Bagley, tell me you're close. I'm through security, now wading through terabytes of decoy code looking for the detonation sequence. <gasps>
Captain Dalton, I need your physical appendages now. What's wrong? There are three slots on the left. One of them is the receiver. You need to pull the controller wire. Are you fucking kidding me? No, I'm fucking not. Pull the wire. This gets me blown up. Bombs defused. <laughs> See? That wasn't so bad, was it? Bagley, you bastard. You nearly gave me a bloody heart attack then. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Whoa, what the fuck am I looking at? It appears Parliament is not the only target. More bombs are going live as we speak. On screen, Bagley. Now we need to get the word out. It's at the Tone Conference. We have to do something. I picked up a transmitter on the roof that is sending out a signal to the other bomb sites. If you can reach it... I can shut it all down. Sabine! Fuck! Dalton, we're breached! Go! The roof! Sabine, what's going on? We're being raided. It's a bloodbath. Her protocol is to wipe everything, including Bagley. I need him for the transmitter. I know, but if they get him, they get everything. Names, opt, locations. Okay, I'll do it the old-fashioned way. Wipe him. Yes, wipe me. Do it, Sabine, and get the hell out of there. Fuck. Okay, Bagley's down. You're on your own. Dalton, if this goes... It won't. I'll see you at the rally point. I promise. Good luck.
fuck are you? Oh, you still think you're here to save London? I'm afraid that's not going to happen. You're here to help us with some important work. Important work? Killing thousands of... Exactly. To save the world. You do know Londoners have died before. Hmm? The plague, the great fire, the blitz. There's not much fun. But destruction is always the cure. And it begins today. Zero day. Time for a hard reset. Oh my god. Months ago, a series of explosions devastated three sites in London. Authorities are asking residents to remain in their homes as the situation continues to develop. We have received no official casualty total, but it is expected. For a series of candlelight vigils that brought closure to thousands of families and indeed to an entire city. London is now laser riddled. They attend Downing Street, where Nigel Cass, CEO of private military company Albion, received a mandate to secure London. Cass has vowed to hunt down dead set. Terrorist response is way loose. Albion used cutting edge artificial intelligence systems and autonomous drones to capture the remaining members of dead set. A stark warning to would-be insurgents. Top corporations are posting record profits due to increased efficiencies in production and distribution, enabled by the use of technologies initially developed and approved for security purposes. A long overdue cleanup as crime numbers take a dive. Illegal gambling, drug trafficking, and prostitution all down following prosecutions of the leaders of four of London's five largest criminal syndicates. The streets of Camden. And is extended indefinitely by the government, life finally begins to return to normal. Curfews and travel restrictions have been lifted in all boroughs thanks to the deployment. Big news outlets, reports of rioting in Trafalgar Square have been greatly exaggerated, possibly by foreign meddlers pushing a false narrative through social media. Albion is in complete control of a few... reprimand the public about the circulation of fake news, conspiracy theories existing in dark corners of the internet that terrorist group DeadSec were framed for the bombings have been roundly rejected. Our own reporters could not find a single Londoner willing to expound those theories on camera. The facts I need to assemble a team, but I can't reboot DedSec alone. Let me break into London CTOS and see who's available. I'm Claire Waters, and we've been discussing the hacktivist, now alleged terrorist group, DedSec, on this week's Buccaneer Radio. I have Colin calling in. Colin, what's your take? Now, I've been saying from the start we should have round up dead sick and thrown them in jail. Now, I'll say they should all be lined up and shut. You don't find it awfully convenient that they've been fingered as the attackers, but we've seen no proof? Look at town! Look at our city! What more proof do you need? Well, Colin, I'd say you have to look at their history of non-violent action. Albion's put more civilians in the hospital in the past few months than dead sick ever has. I smell a scapegoat. Now I have Emily calling in. Emily, what's your take? You're absolutely right, Claire. 
The government's just framing DedSec because they want to make it seem like they have this under control. They probably have no clue who was behind the bombings. But that doesn't look good on the news, does it? DedSec's been a thorn in their side. Who better to pin it on? Angie, I have you next. What do you make of all this? I think if anything, huh? DedSec showed their true colors. It's terrifying to think we harbored such a dangerous element for years. Terrorists in our own backyard. Do you find DedSec more frightening than the different gangs in London like Clan Kelly? Clan Kelly might set your shop on fire and maybe they'd kill you, but even they wouldn't try to blow up all of Parliament. Next, I have Crypto King. Do you feel safer using a pseudonym? Good. Why make it easier for them to track you? And now we've seen what they're capable of and how far they're willing to go. Hold on. Do you mean the government? Are you suggesting the government was responsible for the bombings? Oh, trust me, Claire. They didn't do it alone. They're all in on it. The government, Albion, Sirs, Bloom... Sky Bloody Larson, and all the way up to Downing Street. They want to keep us scared, harness us with, with mind control, suck every last ounce of usefulness out of us, and, and, and even in death they'll sell off our bodies. And what do you suggest we do, Crypto King? Go underground. Deep enough, no electric signal can get you. It's the only way. Well, thank you to all of our callers today, and thank you for tuning in and scouting for the truth along with me. Next week, Buccaneer Radio will be diving into the Albion Corporation. Just who are these men and women being paid lucrative amounts for the city's defence? Are they protecting us? Protecting London? Or someone else's interests? See you next week, fellow pirates. Claire Waters, out. is worse than I thought. Ah, uh, but there's a candidate. Looks like you're dead sex best hope. I need to assemble a team, but I can't reboot DedSec alone. Let me break into London CTOS and see who's available. I'm Claire Waters, and we've been discussing the hacktivist, now alleged terrorist group, DedSec, on this week's Buccaneer Radio. I have Colin calling in. Colin, what's your take? Now, I've been saying from the start we should have round up dead sick and thrown them in jail. Now, I'll say they should all be lined up and shut. You don't find it awfully convenient that they've been fingered as the attackers, but we've seen no proof. Look at town! Look at our city! What more proof do you need? Well, Colin, I'd say you have to look at their history of non-violent action. Albion's put more civilians in the hospital in the past few months than dead sick ever has. I smell a scapegoat. Now I have Emily calling in. Emily, what's your take? You're absolutely right, Claire. The government's just framing DedSec because they want to make it seem like they have this under control. They probably have no clue who was behind the bombings. But that doesn't look good on the news, does it? DedSec's been a thorn in their side. Who better to pin it on? Angie, I have you next. 
What do you make of all this? I think, if anything, huh? dead sex showed their true colours. It's terrifying to think we harboured such a dangerous element for years. Terrorists in our own backyard. Do you find dead sex more frightening than the different gangs in London like Clan Kelly? Clan Kelly might set your shop on fire and maybe they'd kill you, but even they wouldn't try to blow up all of Parliament. Next, I have Crypto King. Do you feel safer using a pseudonym? Good. Why make it easier for them to track you? And now we've seen what they're capable of and how far they're willing to go. Hold on. Do you mean the government? Are you suggesting the government was responsible for the bombings? Oh, trust me, Claire. They didn't do it alone. They're all in on it. The government, Albion, Sirs, Bloom, Sky Bloody Larson, and all the way up to Downing Street. They want to keep us scared, harness us with, with mind control, suck every last ounce of usefulness out of us, and, and even in death they'll sell off our bodies. And what do you suggest we do, Crypto King? Go underground. Deep enough, no electric signal can get you. It's the only way. Well, thank you to all of our callers today, and thank you for tuning in and scouting for the truth along with me. Next week, Buccaneer Radio will be diving into the Albion Corporation. Just who are these men and women being paid lucrative amounts for the city's defence? Are they protecting us? Protecting London? Or someone else's interests? See you next week, fellow pirates. Claire Waters, out. is worse than I thought. Ah, uh, but there's a candidate. Looks like you're dead sex best hope. You've got all these fancy new toys, but it's also important to know the basics. You need to learn how to throw a punch and how to take one. Albion will escalate if you come at them with a gun and shoot you down. We want to avoid collateral damage. In DedSec, we try to use guns only as a last resort. Have you already met Connie Robinson? She owns the pub and is an old DedSec contact, not to mention a champion amateur... Start with some basic strikes. Hit me. Don't be shy. You want to get in under my block. Find the weak point. 
couldn't have done that better yourself. Just like that. Quick on your feet now. You want to create distance. You're getting it. Gear in order? Know enough not to punch yourself in the face or get shot for pulling out a gun too early? Brilliant! I'm working out how we find Zero Day and ruin their day, but I need someone with actual legs to do the legwork. Hope you're ready. We have some damage control to do if we want to change the perception that we're a bunch of violent thugs. I'll let you be the judge of how best to handle yourself, but remember, you represent DeadSec now. Today on The Upload, we're talking about Sky Larson, the enigmatic founder of Broker Tech. Everyone knows her name, but no one knows too much about her, and we only really see her these days as a hologram. She was pretty young when she launched Broker Tech, the company that is best known for introducing Bagley to the world. Nowadays, it's hard to remember a world before Bagley. And I think that what Sky Larson's done with Bagley is absolutely incredible. Bagley is the most advanced, significant AI of our time, and it's really blown all the other AIs that were created out of the water. Yeah, I mean, I can't really imagine the optic without it. But what do you know about Sky Larson herself? Um, not a lot other than that she's actually pretty incredible. I've followed her work for a long time, and she's always been a pretty private person. I know that she supposedly grew up in the countryside, but there isn't actually that much more we know about her other than this tech that she's put out into the world. I've always found it a bit creepy that she's so obsessed with this idea of transhumanism. Why wouldn't you be when you've got a mind as amazing as Skye's? Why wouldn't you want to take what you've got and actually augment it by working with technology, by improving your physical self, changing your body and the world around you, implementing more technology to extend your life and really sort of extend human capabilities. You sound pretty much in love with Sky Larson, I have to say. I can't comment on that, but I am a big fan of her work. She's been one of these people that has transformed the world around us, and just watching how her mind works from afar is pretty incredible because some of what the technology she's introduced has changed how we all live our lives, and Bagley has been this really incredible assistance to humanity as a whole. Did I ever tell you that I actually interviewed Sky Larson once? Really? I thought she never spoke to the media or anything. So this was a long time ago, back in the day when she was a little bit more accessible. And she was one of these people that just had an amazing presence. You were inspired by her very being and she was just incredibly talented and knowledgeable and one of possibly the best living people that I've ever met. I'm not sure you're being too objective there. I mean, 
I imagine she's not very likable as a person. She obviously despises humanity in some way. I think she believes that becoming data is preferable to being human. She's one of these people who is extremely methodical in everything that she does. And she does everything to perfection and really tries to change the world around her and make it a better place for us to live in. If you say so. Welcome back to The Upload. In this episode, we're talking about CTOS 3.0, the city operating system that's now powering all of London. For those of you who need reminding, as if anyone does at this point, CTOS was first used in Chicago in 2014 and then San Francisco in 2017 before coming here to London. And every time it's been rolled out, it's been pretty much an unmitigated disaster. For those of you who are listening who are lucky enough not to be here in London's chaotic scenes, it's worth remembering that the Telecoms Tower is now owned by Bloom. The tower looms over northwest London. It's always been a communications hub, acting as part of the UK's television and communications network, although there's been some secrecy around its use. And now that Bloom owns it, it's only even more secret. Yeah, now everything that's part of Bloom's city surveillance operation is run through the Telecoms Tower. And I have to say, it looks completely ridiculous. It's got that silly crown thing at the top and all the blue light. What's that even about? What does it do? I don't see that there's any purpose to that at all. It's a blight on the skyline, if you ask me. And it's become the main point of control for millions of people. The system network and Bagley are both operated and streamed from there too. And don't forget about the self-driving cars too. I always thought they were just running on their own. No, CTOS is the big control system behind the cars. There was a point back in the earliest days of self-driving car technology that they operated by themselves. They used to use a series of sensors to see the world around them. Radar, for instance, would look far off into the distance, while LiDAR would detect objects nearby. And while these cars still use uh, some of this technology, Bloom CTOS and its detailed maps and data that it has on London really makes Bloom be able to take control of it. And CTOS can take control of your car if you're parked incorrectly. It's no surprise that it was made mandatory to have a self-driving car. The system is so bad though, it's so annoying. Whenever I try to use one of the shareable self-driving cars, I always find myself stuck in traffic jams or roadblocks. Not to mention the accidents, I've heard so many stories of cars shunting into the back of others than it was before. I'm giving up on the cars, I'm only using the bikes which are not self-driving at the moment at least. And don't even get me started on the data. Everything that Bloom sees from your movements around the city and the self-driving cars is collected and feeds back into its big information control system. Oh, not you and Bloom and privacy again. You're a broken record. Not as broken as our city's cars. up in today's episode of The Upload, we're talking about how Bagley managed to conquer London. 
pretty much my favorite topic. I could talk for hours about the rise of the AI system. It's easy to forget about its origins. It's so present everywhere we go now. Bagley just kind of blends into the background. Bagley is the service AI that's present in every optic device. Whether you're using the optic, Bagley will be there. The AI is streamed to your optic from Bloom Central Command Center, and it was first created by Sky Larson, our tech hero, as part of her techno-utopian idea for the world. Why do you think it grew so quickly? In my mind, it's no surprise that Bagley became so popular. It's funny, useful, fast. It's a great companion and really just makes life so much easier. I mean, when you look back at all the service AIs that used to exist, they just can't compete. When you ask Bagley anything, there's a quick answer and loads of information available to you. One day, I let Bagley answer all of my messages for a whole 24 hours and no one even noticed the difference. The other competitors really just couldn't compete with Bagley. Their answers were so much worse, they didn't understand anything, and Bagley pretty much gets everything right first time. Do you have any idea why Bagley really beat all the competition? Well, it's really the data, isn't it? Ever since Broker hooked up with Bloom, that's when things changed. And really, that's not actually that great. Bloom has data on everybody. They collect information about everything you're doing across the web through your optic headset. Isn't the AI only good because of Bloom's surveillance? Well, I suppose so, but I'd prefer not to talk about that side of things. Bagley is so special because it's been trained on this huge cache of information. That's how these AI systems work or at least used to work. I mean, we don't really know that much about the latest version because there's so much secrecy around the tech, but they're given this huge amount of training data. It's basically a huge database that's used to teach the AI about patterns in behavior. You know, so if you always travel the same way to your house, it can predict when you're going to go and get a self-driving car ready for you before you even ask for it. That's pretty terrifying. In some ways, I don't want this data to, to drive my life. It understands too much at times. Have you heard some of the rumors around the hacked version of Bagley? I've heard mutterings, yes. I've heard it's been used by DeadSec. I wouldn't put it past them. It's pretty well known that they're not fans of Bloom. But the idea of a souped up version of Bagley, given it's already so intelligent, is a bit terrifying. I wonder what they could actually make it do. This is the bug. Hello, resistors. It's bug time. Are you all sitting comfortably? No? Good. That's as it should be. This is the bug. I'm Andy, and joining me to analyse the latest blowflies to emerge from the corpse of a once free Britain, it's Alice. Hello, Andy. And today, we're going to talk to you about Albion, uh, your friends and mine. Alice, the government has extended Albion's contract and have also boasted that violent crime has plummeted to a record low. Now, extending Albion's contract, to me, that's like having a pet dog, let's call it Nigel for the sake of argument, that attacks you every single day and thinking to yourself, wouldn't it be nice if Nigel had puppies? <laughs> that contract has been extended so many times, it's like the neck of a politician that's criticised the government. <laughs> I'm not sure entirely how those contract extension negotiations went, probably like, like, a, like a footballer. In the old days, I assume Albion's agent was leaking stories to the press about how our favourite private militia was being tapped up by Barcelona or by <laughs> Munich. The government panics and thinks, well, we better get them signed up before it's too late. But still, violent crime, a record low, although I imagine that probably depends exactly how you count it. If you include violent crime committed by the state, either themselves or via Albion, their chosen violent crime contractors, who provide such a very valuable bargain service of beating people up, well, it's probably not quite as low as the figures suggest. I don't know. I, I think they're probably right. Who has the opportunity to commit violent crime these days anyway? The moment you pick up a fruit knife, you get tasered by a robot policeman and deported for looking Bulgarian. <laughs> it's a much more peaceful society. It's just much less of a society. I want to know the details of the contracts, Alice. I mean, are they paid per dissident duffed up? Is it, is it a set rate for each extrajudicial state mugging? And what is that rate? What do you think? Well, they certainly look like they're trying to hit a quota of some kind. <laughs> well, what, is the, what is the set rate? Is it what, 99 point? 95 cryptos bargain. It seems very reasonable indeed. <laughs> I, I imagine they don't ask too much anyway, because it's just so nice to get paid for doing your hobby anyway, isn't it? I imagine it doesn't even feel like work. <laughs> I mean, who needs violent crime anymore anyway? You know, you can just starve to death without even starting a gang war. We do have to ask exactly what does the Prime Minister make of all this? Uh, let's ask him. Oh, I, I hope they pick up. 
Hello, you're through to number 10 Downing Street. Hello, is the Prime Minister there, please? <laughs> Let me just check. Sorry, you've missed him. I'm afraid he's popped out for the decade. Oh, never mind. Is there anyone else I can talk to? Yes, of course. There's a shady cabal of vested interests who control him and prop him up in power. Great, I'll have a chat with them then. Oh, Andy, remember when you'd get away with prank calls without people coming round to your house to beat the shit out of you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, happy time. You're listening to the bar. Did you think the Prime Minister will, will, will ever come back? I don't think we've ever had a Prime Minister. Well, that's a much more reassuring way of looking at things. <laughs> what have we become, Alice? When you look at the state of our politics, we're supposed to have the mother of parliaments. Well, this is one mother that has emphatically abandoned her kids in the woods to be brought up by wolves. And let me tell you, that never works out like it does in the stories. Wolves are bad parents, <laughs> unless you're a wolf, in which case they can do a job bringing you up as a wolf. Do not give your children to wolves. And do we actually own anything as a country now? Is there anything we haven't flogged off for profit? Oh, I think we've basically just become a homeopathic Britain. Yeah. Diluted and diluted until there's barely a trace of the original Britain left. But some quackish lunatics insist it actually works better that way. It's total bullshit. Is there anything left? New on the bug this week, a new feature, the bug off feature. Uh, the person who has most irritated us uh, in Britain uh, this week, we're going to tell to bug off. And to get things going, I'm going to nominate uh, Big Nigel. Nigel Cass, look, this is Britain. Uh, history tells us this place is a bastion of freedom. I'm just not sure that that kind of freedom should involve Big Nigel expressing his freedom to run a private army. I guess, historically, there is a precedent. The East India Company, that was a trading house with an army of 250,000 soldiers, which is a lot for a company. The Bug PLC has Alice with a water pistol. But crucially, <laughs> compared with Albion, the East India Company didn't operate its quarter of a million strong army in London. Uh, it did it a long way away, <laughs> out of sight out of mind. Anyone to nominate for, for the bug off, Alice? I think today's bug off for me goes to my streaming service. I'm sick of being recommended things based on things I already like. The other day it recommended me to watch a reality TV competitive dating show set in a nude commune. Andy, I watched it and I liked it and I do not want to be the kind of person who enjoys nude competitive reality television dating shows. <laughs> I did not want to know that about myself. I have to go sit in the corner and cry. That's it from the bug. Don't forget the live show that is so secret Secret it is definitely not happening at the usual time and place this month. Definitely not. And definitely do not not tell anyone not, not to come to it. It's definitely not happening. <laughs> usual time and place. Bye-bye. First things first, um, what comes first? Make no mistake, London is under occupation. It's allegedly to keep people safe, but really they're keeping the people scared. Nothing like fear to keep people in line. Albion can get away with just about anything. So, we have to ignite the will to resist in the people of London by showing them that Albion aren't the solution, they're the problem. For that, we'll need information. I'm pushing two sets of coordinates to your optic. Cheers, Bagley. I've identified two opportunities. One, we're going to disrupt some Albion propaganda. Remind the people it's not Albion's way or the highway. Two, we need intel about Albion operations if we want to throw a spanner in their plans. You game? I am game, set and match, my dear. Brilliant. Let's get the people of London on board. Oh, 
possible hostile at your location. Received. Moving in hostile's direction. Right, close this fucker down. Negative. No sign of suspect. Over. I'm putting an end to this. Over. Any other patrols have eyes on the suspect, over? All units force this suspect to stop. As the hunger strike of six migrants currently being held at the Kennington Oval enters its tenth day, officials released a statement indicating that force feeding procedures would commence in order to safeguard the lives of the protesters. International agencies have called the situation a humanitarian crisis. Join us on GBB tonight as we look at migrants, detention, and the prospects for a solution to this complicated and contentious issue. Auto drive now enabled. Auto drive now disabled.
You look like the rebellious sort. Are you interested in fighting the good fight? Fuck me! Are you dead sick? I could use your help. Uh huh. Tell me your secrets, then I'll tell you mine. What's the deal? It's these Clan Kelly dipshits. Planted drugs at my mate's home, got him detained. All because they wanted some protection money. That's horrid. I've told the cops who the two fucks responsible are, but do you think they're doing a single thing about it? Nah. Cops are as useless as knitted condoms. If you want justice, DedSec will make your dreams come true. Might as well give it a go. Help me with this, and I'll make it worth your while, if you know what I mean. I've got coordinates for the two suspects. Scrape their optic data. That should give us more than enough to incriminate them. Got it. Searching for the source. Fingers, I know. Fingers, I show. 
whose optic data we're looking to scrape is nearby. Not ours. Lock it down. They've got a spider, but they've got worse. Find them. Oh, no, fuck off. Not here. Not here. Moving on. Moving on. Clear. Gonna check over there. Go get that waste. in from there. That's one criminal scraped. Now let's give their friend a good scraping too. And then maybe their mum. No one will be left unscraped. No one.
I'm in a slip. I need some cover. Hmm. Both of their optics are squeaky clean. They're smart. Damn. But I'm about 8.61 million times smarter, give or take an order of magnitude. I managed to trace their encrypted comms channel back to a remote server. Seems like a good spot to dig up some info. Criminals we're investigating have a server at this location. Hack in from there. Ah! Fuck 
Of anything wrong, I'll keep looking. Yeah, no one here, but I'll keep looking. Beauty, oh. shit, bruv. Shut it down. Wheels are dodgy. Let's find whoever's behind yeah. this. Better check elsewhere. Oh, oh, shit. I've got to tell the bastard yeah, to go no away. Here, but I'll keep looking. I'll find this way. Nah, that don't look right. We need a lockdown. Someone thinks they're jokes, man. I'm gonna dig you up, hacker. Wait, listen. Oh, the Transfer complete. We just shot you loads of incriminating evidence, more than you asked for, enough to rouse the interest of our impotent police force. Brilliant! Best thing you could do is join DedSec. We could use you. Fuck yeah! Sign me up!
Hooray! Another friend to raise hell with. Welcome to DedSec. Hell yes! I'm ready to get me hands dirty with you lot. Fabulous. Back away! Do not interfere!